Hello everyone, welcome back to the .NET full stack series and in this today's video we are going to fine tune our API documentation which is nothing but this swagger page. In our last video we implemented JWT authentication which is critical for securing our APIs. So now it's time to ensure our swagger documentation reflects this improvement and look little bit polished. So in this video we will walk through updating the swagger document to make it more professional and user friendly. Especially we will update the document's name like in sure our endpoints are basically lowercase and it's quite consistent and also add the JWT security definition so that consumer of our API knows how do we authenticate okay so if you're ready to enhance the API documentation and make it easier for others to use so grab a seat and let's get started so first thing first what I observed here that this looks quite basic to be honest there is nothing no information what kind of uh, things what we are trying to prepare and also I'm not very happy when I look at the API endpoints right so this is because we are making use of the attributes controller so if I go in the code here right so if you go to the controllers auth controller and we are using this base api controller so as it is resembling it from the controller name right so as if you have the name of the controller as auth so what it does right it takes this auth which is in in this like uh, caps right the a is in caps it reflects something similar here as well but that's not the case right i don't want it to be like that so the one solution for that is you can remove this from base api controller and then you can start creating your own and what do I mean by that? So if I go back again to the auth controller, so you can do it like this slash auth slash register. So this is one of the way, but I really don't like this way. So let's let's go ahead and try to do it with the Swagger API documentation. So that's why this is video I am going to create where we can actually improve our Swagger documentation a bit. Okay. And also you saw in the last video to, to do the like, uh, what do we say, add the JWT token and all that we were using postman to do it, right? Add this way the token and putting it here and then we are doing the API testing. But now we will not do all of that. We'll try to improve in such a way that everything can be done in this swagger documentation. Okay. So first thing first, we have to go and update the naming, right? So for that, let's open up your rider and let's go inside this folder where we have program.cs and can you see you have this file name uh, sorry the line called as add swagger gen okay so you must have seen in most of the videos people don't even touch this file but we are going to do a lot of things around this swagger gen so what we will do that we will try to add some more options to our swagger generator okay so what kind of option let's try to figure out okay let me open up this like this right and then do the changes over here so first thing first we have to update update the names of the api right so that it should be more consistent by creating it to a lower case so before that let's try to add the name right so let's improve the name so this is the second thing we have to do the first of all we update uh, we have to first update the name of the document and how do we do that we we have something called as options dot swagger doc okay so to the swagger doc what we can do can you see this guy needs has two things first of all the name uh, which we can provide so this is nothing but my version one okay so you can version your api endpoint as well version one and here you can also provide the second one which is the options by we are using the new keyword okay let me make it a type so this is new um, like open api info where you can put the title this is angular blog api and you can also provide the version like this over here okay so let me save the changes and again let's go back and let's see what changes this has added to this particular file okay let it get run okay it is running now can you see now now we have updated the name and title so now this is the version one of our angular blog api okay so this is how it was and if i refresh it so this is how it looks like now okay so now the next thing we have to target is this kind of name okay so this name we have to update so to update this name right what i have to do first uh let me remove this weather controller because it is not required okay let's remove that and let me stop the project okay so we have to create a new class and this class is nothing but your document filter okay so we can create a class public class and let's give the name as lowercase Okay, and we have to inherit it from iDocumentFilter. 
okay and this is nothing but coming from your swagger so if you go on the top it has been imported as well okay swashbuckleesp.net code dot swagger gen all right and now what we need to do right as this is an interface then this will ask me to implement it so let me implement that so we have this void dot apply okay where we have swagger doc and this context right so first of all what we need to do right we have to get the path okay we have to get the paths and after that we have to uh, add the path in the swagger so then add the path so next step we have to add the paths in swagger okay let me improve this yes so how do we get the path so for that let me just say where paths will be is equals to my swagger doc right swagger doc dot paths okay inside this path we can convert it into two dictionary okay so what we have to provide first can you see we have this key and then we have actual where we can try to convert it into the lower case so what we will do right so we will say path and this path will have path dot key and then here we can specify two lower case invariant so there is something called as two lower invariant and that's what we are going to do that and next thing what we have to do again we will again use this path and use this lambda expression and then after that we have path dot key right so we have swagger dot doc dot path okay and this path inside that we we'll just specify this path key which we just now like updated right so we'll say path dot path dot key and that's it and the moment you do this right so now you can say that this will have all your paths on the top so you have updated all your path and now you have to add that path in the swagger doc so what we will do right we'll again just say it as empty swagger doc dot paths and we will say it as new new op open api paths and now we will start adding that okay so to add this side we will make use of the for each okay so in the for each the collection is nothing but your paths what we have created on the top and this will nothing but your path item okay and based on that you will say swagger doc dot paths dot add and then we will start adding this new key what we just now created so we have this path item path item dot key okay path item dot key and the second thing is your path value so we get it from path item dot value okay and the moment you add this right so just save the changes okay and now you have to make use of this class on the top okay so what you will do right just go on the top so just below this right where we have to update the api endpoint so you'll say op options dot swagger generator option dot document filter dot add and then you can just say new lower case document filter what you just have now created just now created okay and let's save the changes and again run the application okay i think there is something which is failing yeah because we have removed the controller so let's go back here and we don't need this weather controller anymore right so let me also delete this weather controller edit and there will be a delete option let's delete this okay so that has been deleted and now let me run the project again it should start now yeah the project has been started and now can you see right now my auth got updated to the lower case now so i don't need to do it with the controller name and do everything explicitly can you see now this is in cap if i refresh it all got changed to the lower case and that's what i want right my document to be all same not something is in cap something is in lower case and all that okay so that thing can be done by this piece of code okay so now what is our next thing next thing we have to configure we have to configure the jwt right so let's configure the jwt authentication thing right okay so jwt authentication so just below this right what you will do you will add a new security definition so in swagger there is something called as option option dot add okay add security definition as we are using jwt right so we can just give the name to it so this is a bearer right this is a bearer and then we have this new api security schema so in this right we will add some information over here like give some description like what is this doing so this is nothing but your jwt header using the jwt schema and all that information okay thanks to ai it is able to give me some some information here right now next thing what you need to add okay i think it, I, it went up 
right right next thing what you can add here you can give the name to it so the name is nothing but your authorization you can say in parameter like header then you have type which is nothing but your api key and then you can also provide the schema which is nothing but your bearer okay so once you add this right so this is nothing but help you to the document part okay if i again refresh the application let's restart okay so once i do the restart can you see i'm able to get a security option as you have added that security definition so it has been added here as an authorized so if you click on the authorize, so this is what I was talking about. So we have added some uh, date, like definitions, right? Like this is JWT using header, the name, the in, and then the value. Okay. So if you add some value over here, right? Okay. If you put some value here, if you click on authorize, so this is how the page will look like. Okay. And it will give you this authorized, but this is just a fake one. We are not even actually added all the requirements. So we have to add the security requirement explicitly okay so this is just what we have added the definition right so if you remember the description so whatever the description you have added here all of those are visible over here okay when we click on this authorize and all this information okay so now let's try to add our real token and try to click on authorize but to do that right we have to add one more thing which is nothing but the bearer security requirement okay so let's go ahead and add that as well and this is very important okay so i will be going very slow just to explain this so we have to add this add jwt bearer security requirement okay requirement okay and now what i'll do right so we have something called as options dot add security requirement as you can see this one and then inside this set we will say new open api security requirement which is this okay and this is nothing but going to be a class which will accept few things more and this is a but nothing but my object right what i just opened and inside that it will accept an object i don't know why is it going like that yeah this will accept an object and inside this we have to provide the new api security scheme so we'll say new open api security scheme right and inside that you will have something called as reference where you can say that okay this is again new class which will have open api reference and inside this you will have type if i'm not wrong yes and type will have security schema and id will be a bearer okay just below this you will have another schema and the schema you can provide as oauth and you can give the name as bearer and in parameter is nothing but your header okay and just below this you will have to specify this empty array and this empty array is nothing but whatever the dictionary value you have read the keys what it requires so you just have to put this empty so that it is happy now like not uh, throwing any errors or issue okay let me stop this okay once you added all this basic information again if you want you can make use of chat gpt as well to get such information so that is also allowed but the only thing is you should know what kind of security requirement we are trying to add okay so this is very important so that's why i went a little bit slow try to explain what is this doing okay so once you add all of this right so now you don't need postman so if i run the project if i run the project okay uh, Thing, everything is success yes it will open up the browser right and now if i refresh this again i think it takes some time to load yes it's loading hmm, i don't know what happened let, let me refresh again let me see if something got break yes it is not able to open let me again close and restart build success yeah now it is opened i think yeah can you see now everywhere we have this lock button okay now if i try to click on this api slash user try to click on execute as expected i'm getting 401 which is valid so to get this right first we have to authenticate it so let's authenticate by saying abc at the rate gmail.com and the password is one two three four five six whatever i have registered already okay so if i click on execute can you see i get a token uh, let me copy this token and this token will be used in the authorize now if i go here this is my bearer type so i'll say bearer and i'll paste this and click on authorize so this will do a login for me for whole can you see now this log icon got changed and now if i click on execute my expectation is that i should be able to get the response and that's what it is i got the response successfully okay so which means i don't have to leave this swagger page to go anywhere else on other application to to check the valid uh, apis like all to check the resources which are which needs the login 
okay so now we can actually test that by using this authorize and now if you want to log out if you click on this log out close and now if you again try to click on execute you will see 401 okay so that's how we were able to also add this feature in your dotnet full stack application now let's also try to uh, improve this class the program.cs file because this is getting more bulky right and this is not good to have everything in this so what we will do right we'll try to create a extension method okay and we will try to put all of this like a uh, swagger the jwt all into a single file okay so to do that right uh, maybe what i can do i can have a service collection exception um, extension on the top class as well so i'll say service collection extensions okay and this was nothing going to be my static class and this is my okay right so now what i'll do uh, i will create one more method which is public static and this is nothing going to be a uh, i service collection this collection and add web services okay and what this will do this will accept uh, this i service collection services and then inside that i will try to put all of my logics like for example i don't need this right so i can copy this all swagger documentation maybe i can cut it directly and put it in the service collection okay and i can import all the necessary things over here right now we don't need this builder we can directly use the services from the top right and now everything is in the one place so this is for web service i what i can do that i can also add the token over here in this particular class right and how do we add that to add it again i will go in the program.cs file so this is my jwt thing so let me cut everything from here as well and put it in the service collection just below this and again we don't need this builder we'll say services dot add and then again do the imports okay but the only challenge here is that we need this configuration as well so what we will do we will take this as i configuration and we'll provide the configuration from here so no need to add this we can directly use the configuration here okay no need to use the builder anymore and we can get it directly via this right and now what you can do right you can have to pass it to this so whenever we are using i web service you have to pass i configuration as well okay and now once this is done let me close this bit and then you can just say return and then we return the services okay so once you did that successfully what you can do right you can use this add web service in your program.cs class right okay so now let's go move here and we can say builder dot services and then you can say add web service can you see add web service uh, the only requirement to this web service is you need to pass the instance of configuration so we can say builder dot configuration and that's it right and let's go here and i want to improve the yeah i think everything is fine now let me save the changes stop the application and rebuild the application okay i'm expecting build should be success yes it is success and now let's run the application just to validate everything works fine so if i go back here and if i refresh let me try to do login okay and put the password one two three four five six click on execute i'm expecting everything should work again yes it's working fine copy this click on authorize error with the token name click on authorize and now i will be able to get all my users right i'm getting the response if i click on log out and if i click on execute again then can you see i'm getting 401 all right and as i can say there you have it like you just now have polished your swagger documentation by giving it a proper name making a endpoint consistent and also adding jwt security definition okay so this small improvement go a long way in making your api more user friendly and professional okay so that's why i wanted to teach you all about how important it is to also maintain your swagger documentation all right so if you have enjoyed this video then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more deep dives video in dotnet development in the next video we will be covering the topic on user management okay so we will also see right because currently if you see we are storing the password in the database as uh, let me just show you i think i have it over here or db let me open up the table maybe the users table right and let me just select and now if you see right we are storing the password as an actual string which is not good so we will also see in the next video how do we do the user management and we will try to complete the whole api endpoints related to the user okay so next video is going to be a very big one and very important one as well because we will see role management and we'll also see the user management how we can do that in a dotnet project okay so if you want to learn that then 
subscribe to the channel all right so thanks for watching and as always guys keep coding keep learning and see you guys in the next one